Grace, the global resource for advancing cancer education, is pleased to provide the following presentation by Dr. Julie Bramer on treatment after the first-line setting for advanced non-small cell lung cancer, which drugs and when. Dr. Bramer is a medical oncologist, lung cancer expert, and assistant professor of medicine at the Sidney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. She spoke at the Grace Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer Patient Education Forum in Seattle in September of 2009, a program supported by OSI Pharmaceuticals and Swedish Cancer Institute. Thanks for everyone for staying till the end here, but this is not the end, this is just the beginning. So for most of my patients, after first line treatment, it's now what? Now what do I do? And I think there's three different scenarios after first line therapy. One is that the cancer is getting worse while on first line treatment. The second one is you have stable disease after four to six cycles of therapy. And then the third is that the cancer is responding to treatment, but you are at four to six cycles. And we know that for first line treatment, four to six cycles is pretty much the standard. To continue the chemotherapy, even though your cancer is responding to this, if you're continuing two drugs, you're gonna get worse side effects, and the studies have not shown that you're gonna live longer. We're just gonna beat on you for a longer period of time. <laughs> so the standard for us is to say four to six cycles, and now the time is to stop, and let's stop and we'll follow you. So that was the standard up to this spring, but things are changing. So, but let's start with this one. Certainly a lot of our patients have worsening disease while on therapy for first line treatment. And so what do we have for options? The FDA has approved options, if you're not eligible for a clinical trial, of course. One option is Olympta for second-line treatment, or Pemetrexid, Taxotere for second-line treatment, otherwise known as Docetaxel, or Erlotinib. Now, this is in the United States. Other places do have IRESA outside of the US. A lot of it depends on what you were given for first-line treatment. And we do know that Olympta is now starting to be used not just in the second line treatment, but moving up into the first line treatment, particularly for those patients who have non-squamous cell cancer. We know that Olympta, at least over the past year, we've seen studies that show that Olympta works better for those patients with non-squamous cell cancer. If you have squamous cell cancer, Olympta tends not to have a benefit compared to some other treatments, such as gemcitabine or Taxotere. So a lot of it will depend on what your histology is and what you've been given for the first-line treatment and also how healthy are you at this point and what sort of side effects have you had from your previous treatment, as well as smoking status. So if someone is continuing to smoke while on therapy, we do have some data that patients may not benefit from Tarceva quite as much if they're still smoking. And in fact, we may even have to increase the dose to even get an effect of Tarceva. So if someone has already received a limp in the first line setting, for the second line setting, if they're not currently smoking, I tend to go straight to Tarceva. If they have squamous cell cancer, I do tend to skip Olympta and use Taxotere and reserve Tarceva for third line treatment for patients with squamous cell cancers. If patients with non-squamous cell cancer have not received Olympta yet, I'll use Olympta or Tarceva and kind of talk with the patient about what sort of side effects they want to avoid and also treatment schedule. Olympta is given once every three weeks intravenously, so you have side effects from it, but it goes away before you do the next dose. The Tarceva, you have to take every day to get the effect, but you'll also get side effects every day. So that all is taken into account. Now, these are the various different studies that have been done to get these drugs on the market. These are two studies that looked at Taxotere versus placebo, given once every three weeks. This is also a study that looked at Taxotere given once weekly. This is the Olympta study that directly compared that to Taxotere, and these work the same, but Olympta has less side effects. And then this is the study that actually compared Tarceva versus placebo, and it showed that Tarceva patients did better compared to those patients treated with placebo. But this is just kind of the amount of side effects. Grade three and four side effects are, to us, significant side effects. But I'd also say grade one and two are also potential bad side effects. But we know patients who are receiving Taxotere in the second-line setting, given once every three weeks, have a high rate of low white cell count 
and a risk of infection. So if someone had a lot of problems with their blood counts on the first line treatment setting, I probably would shy away from giving Taxotere once every three weeks because I know you're going to have a hard time. I might use Taxotere once a week, which tends not to drop your blood counts as much. Now, if a patient had a lot of problems with neuropathy with, say, Taxol for the first line treatment, then giving them Taxotere might not be a great idea because you can also get neuropathy from Taxotere. And so I might tend to use Alinta or Tarceva. So that's kind of the way I look at these three drugs. And a lot of it will depend on how you're doing, what sort of side effects I want to avoid in the second line setting, and then also your preference about your treatments. You know, once every three week treatments, or do you really want to be able to take this treatment at home and have more control over that? This is also just to show you that cancer itself can also cause side effects. And so if you looked at the uh, package insert of Tylenol or any of your anti-nausea medicines, you'd freak out just as much as looking at this list, is that all of our drugs unfortunately have side effects, but nobody gets all of them. I do promise my patients that. And any of these side effects versus grade three and four are really bad side effects. So rash, 76% of patients treated on this drug, Tarceva, had a rash. 17% of patients treated with placebo had a rash. Also fatigue. We know that cancer can cause fatigue as well as treatment can cause fatigue. 74% of patients had fatigue on placebo as well as 79% of patients developed fatigue while on Tarceva. So even cancer can cause side effects as well as drugs. But certainly Tarceva does have more rash and diarrhea compared to being treated with placebo. You have to always take that into account. So, and for Tarceva, the rash is probably the most upfront side effect that people do develop. And some of the most important things is one, make sure the patient is aware of this right up front and be proactive. You don't have to suffer through the rash. So the big thing is make sure you're taking it on an empty stomach. We know that food increases the absorption and more is actually not good in the fact that it will actually increase the rash. Avoid the sun, the sun will make the rash worse. Unfortunately, right now, there's no studied guidelines for the management of rash, but we're slowly getting better at this. Topical steroids help with the erythematous rash. Lotions do help with itching as well as dry skin. And oral and topical antibiotics are also used for what can develop the pustular rash as well. A lot of times, if it's worse than just a mild rash, we will hold the drug for a while and let things cool down and restart it, or we'll decrease the dose. And dermatologists are also very important. There are dermatologists that actually specialize in this type of rash. So what's the second scenario? So a lot of our patients do have stable disease after four to six cycles of therapy. And now what do you do? So you do have two options, watch and wait. And I would say you have to watch and wait very closely. See the doctor once a month, see how you're doing physically and mentally as well as CAT scans every two to three months. And a lot of people can debate this. Or the second option would be start maintenance therapy. Up to this year, we didn't believe maintenance therapy helped. So how can we best control the disease? The goal is control and stable is good. I love response, but for most of my patients, their disease is the same. And if I can keep that the same without causing a whole lot of side effects, that's really good. So the concept of maintenance has various different flavors. Sometimes we'll continue the same type of therapy until the growth of the cancer. So if you've already been receiving Avastin or Herbitux, we will continue that drug by itself without the chemotherapy. Or we'll change to a different treatment, such as Olympta if you have not received that previously, or change to Tarceva. And I'll discuss the two trials that looked at this. So, and the other option for if you have responding disease after four to six cycles, we know that continuing those two drugs continuously will increasing side effects. So what are those options for that patient now? Again, it's exactly the same as those patients with stable disease. And a lot will depend on how the patient tolerated the first type of therapy. If someone has had a lot of side effects and just needs a break, I feel comfortable giving that patient a break. If a patient feels great and just the thought of stopping therapy is just not an option, we will try maintenance therapy. But a lot of my patients do want a break or they actually need to go on vacation for a couple of weeks. So they want to have a break to be able to do things that they would normally want to do that 
chemotherapy makes difficult sometimes. So what is maintenance? Several studies that we've recently completed are promising, but the results when applying this to yourself, you have to be careful. So one of the older trials looked at Taxotir, giving this at maintenance. And what they looked at is giving Taxotir immediately, right after stopping first line treatment, or delayed, like you waited and you were observed closely at a three month interval, and then the Taxotir was then started at the time of cancer growth. So as soon as your CAT scan showed growth, you were started on Taxotir. This study showed no improvement in survival compared to immediate, giving Taxotere right away, versus delayed. But patients who received Taxotere right away did have a prolonged time being alive and having their cancer stable. The problem with this trial is that only 62% actually got the delayed Taxotere. Everyone got the immediate Taxotere in that group but only 62% of the group that was put onto the delayed arm actually got the Taxotere. And they actually looked at that 62%. If they actually got the Taxotere, they lived just as long as if they were given Taxotere right away. So with this study, most everyone felt comfortable. If we could guarantee that a patient actually got second line treatment, they do just as well compared to just starting second line treatment right away after first line treatment. Over the past year, Alinta has been looked at in the maintenance chemotherapy setting. A trial actually looked at patients with stable or responding disease after non-Alimta-based doublets and randomized them to either placebo or Alimta. So this is a little bit different than this one. It did not require that you got Alimta in the second line setting. Patients with non-squamous cell cancer actually live longer and they live longer with their cancer stable. However, only 19% of the patients on the placebo arm were ever treated with a limpta, and only 67% actually ever received any type of second line treatment. So our job as oncologists is try to figure out why 30% of patients didn't even get any second line treatment. And I think in a lot of our practices, we are not seeing this as much. Potentially, are we following our patients closer? Are our patients just healthier? It's just not clear. So and in the lymphoma maintenance, they also looked at the toxicity and quality of life. There was more significant toxicities. That's the grade three and four toxicities that I was talking about, but they were at low rates. Less than 10% of patients had significant toxicities. And I would say if a patient had significant toxicities, I'd take them off the Olympta anyway, because I want to make them feel better, not feel worse. And there was no reported difference in quality of life between Olympta versus placebo. So if you delayed things or started the chemotherapy right away, there was no worsening of quality of life, but also no improvement in quality of life as well. So if you're getting Taxol, Carboplatinum, and then we're trying to figure out what you should do next, one option is to start maintenance Olympta or just watch very closely. If you need a break, I feel comfortable giving that patient a break, but see them once a month and scan them every two to three months and First sign of things getting worse, either you're dropping weight with no good explanation or your cancer's getting worse, we'll start second line therapy right away. So it's a two-way street and it depends on the patient as well. If someone just does not feel comfortable stopping treatment, I feel comfortable continuing a maintenance therapy. So a lymph, particularly for those patients with non-squamous cell histology, I feel comfortable. So what about targeted therapy? We know that a Vastin on this trial after chemotherapy was continued until progression, so that's one type of maintenance. So if you're already benefiting from Avastin, we do continue that until progression of your disease or too many side effects. This study also looked at chemotherapy plus Herbitux, and in this study, Herbitux was continued by itself after four to six cycles of chemotherapy, and this was continued until progressive disease or toxicity. So if you're already getting Herbitux and benefiting from it, I will continue this until your cancer would start growing. So what about maintenance Tarceva? Should we start Tarceva right after you finish first line treatment or should we wait? Well, one clinical trial was just reported and took patients after first line chemotherapy with stable or responding disease. Patients were either randomized to either Tarceva or placebo. More patients receiving Tarceva 
were alive without their cancer worsening compared to those patients who were treated with placebo. There was no difference in quality of life, but the time to worsening pain or the pain medication use favored Tarceva. So these patients actually had a longer time till their pain got worse and did not require as much pain medication compared to those patients with placebo. However, again, the same problem. Only 16% of the placebo patients were ever treated with Tarceva after their cancer worsened, and only 64% of the patients on the placebo treatment ever received second-line therapy. So again, the problem, can we identify those patients who never end up getting second-line therapy, and how can we make sure that they actually get it because we know they will benefit from it? So my conclusions are that second-line therapy depends on the scenario. We have several standard approved second line therapies to use at the time of worsening disease, and this includes Alenta for non squamous cell cancers, Taxotere for both squamous or adenocarcinoma, and Tarceva for both squamous and adenocarcinoma. Maintenance therapy if you're on Avastinor Herbitux, I would continue it if you're benefiting from it. If you're not on Avastinor Herbitux, should you change to Alenta or Tarceva? I think it depends and depends on all of those things that we talked about. So I think that while hope changes depending on what stage of disease that you have, I think for patients with metastatic disease, the hope is control. How can we control your disease and make you live longer and live better? Thank you.